Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to What I Watched This Week, episode number eight. I have a special guest here today, Hayden, a.k.a. Crispy Boy on YouTube. What's up, Hayden? Hey! Hey, Jamin. Good to see you from you again. Yes, he's back, and he's on a brand new, different show altogether. You know, um, I give up. I give up on the other show, and I'd start new shows. That's why I never get anywhere on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, same, I always, same. yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> anyways, welcome. And congrats, by the way, you are now engaged. Oh, thank you. I, I also heard you're also engaged about and like the same engaged. week. The same week. The, the same week, which is kind of wild, actually. It is. It is <laughs> wild and crazy. You'd had a you had yours at the the wonderful Disneyland or Disney World. I did it at Disneyland, which was super fun. I that was always the plan when when I was going. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and engage. And yeah, it was just it it turned out so well. I uh, her family gave me um her her mom's ring to propose with which has been like passed down from generations oh I'm my like, gosh that's oh super god, sweet so that's nice. super sweet it was super fun man it was super good How, yeah. did your engagement i assume went well right yep we are engaged it was at oh. one of her it's at her favorite band's concert so we did it at so oh my god <laughs> yeah during one of our one of their one of the songs that we kind of bonded to you know so it's really so, really nice tender moment <laughs> so nice oh my gosh yep so anyways, getting on to the subject, we're going to talk about the Spongebob movies and kind of what set this off in my brain. Um, go subscribe to Crispy Boy right now because I saw this video when you reviewed the new um, Smash clone. What's it even called? Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon All Stars, Stars Brawl. Brawl. Yeah. So he made this yeah, fantastic video, <laughs> this fantastic review of this of this game. And I was like, uh, Hayden's fixing to pop off. I have to get him back on here before he's too big to to talk to me ever again. So, and he, you're getting close. What are you at? 900 subscribers. I'm at 900. Yep. I and, think at 904 at the moment, which is nice. And uh, last time we talked, you had like, I don't remember how many you had, 400 or so? 300. It was 300 the last time we talked, yeah. And I was still ahead of you. I'm ahead of you. And now you've passed me up. <laughs> So only by only by a little, Just, only yeah. by a little, but we'll, still, we'll, yeah, we'll grow. Together. This video is going to go Absolutely. everywhere. I'm going to share it everywhere. <laughs> Let's get crispy boy to over a thousand subs. That's the goal. Oh my God. That's so kind of you. Let's That's, go. I mean, by golly, I know that there's some people that will see this. So uh, <laughs> you people that see this subscribe, let's get it. Uh, it's only a hundred. We can do that for sure. <laughs> That's my goal. If nothing else. That's very generous, man. Oh my gosh. Little, little. I mean, I mean, it, it was an okay episode too. The 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 Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl one. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I I I'd like to think that I I know a, a lot about SpongeBob, regardless. So I, I'm glad you invited me here to discuss about him because he's he's one of my favorite yellow squares out there. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a quite an affinity with him. There's literally no other person I can think of in the entire world that would be better to talk about the SpongeBob movies than you like <laughs> when you did the room tour at, at, outside of uh, rest in peace steven hillenberg himself you know when i saw your room tour video you talked about you had all this merchandise this collectibles the spongebob collectibles and i was like this dude is deep into this like dude, I... how'd you get started with the spongebob stuff like let's talk about our uh, before we talk about the movies and just i got this my ball you hear is usually not yellow, but I try to put it. It doesn't really look yellow, but it's supposed to be yellow for SpongeBob. So let's just talk about our history with SpongeBob, I guess, first. Absolutely. Well, I, me and SpongeBob, we grew up at the same time, right? So it was mm -hmm. released in 1998. I'm a 1997 guy. Uh, and we just kind of like grew together. And I always loved cartoons. But something about SpongeBob really resonated with me as a young kid, right? And I like saw this nerdy little square who was just a geek uh, and just like going about life with the most positive optimism possible. And that really resonated with me, especially as a young kid. Right. And growing up, he just kind of stuck with me to be completely honest. I like every single time a new movie came out or a new episode, I'd always sit, stick around and watch it. And I'd always show my girlfriend to um, <laughs> all every episode yeah. he has. Uh, she probably knows as much about SpongeBob now because I've shown her uh, as any other human, uh, especially the the holiday specials. You know the um, the stop motion ones. I watch that probably two or three times a 
um every single holiday that comes up the spot yeah. oh man they're so good they're so good yes um yeah. so we'll give the props to to all the creators and everything of spongebob before we go into some of the movies and like spongebob is an amazing creation and i think we'll talk about it late in the movies but we're, i have some things to say negatively about spongebob but oh, sure absolutely there's uh, definitely some negatives there too <laughs> yes but as far as my experience with spongebob growing up of course i was right at that peak age because i was i'm a 92 kid so mm-hmm. i'm like right in that age where they were like fresh brand new and i was probably the right exact demographic like you're probably three or four whenever they were coming out and then you grew mm-hmm. into like when you they were sh- you're probably seeing rerun reruns maybe i was seeing like oh absolutely yeah i was seeing them coming out and it's crazy that spongebob is kind of like he's one of the most iconic cartoon characters ever like his reckon um his notoriety like you think of like He's probably as recognizable as Mario or Mickey Mouse. Like as far as kids, ask anyone. They know who Mario is. They know who Mickey Mouse is. They know who SpongeBob is. I think he's that big. I, I'm going to have to agree 100%. Yes. That's how big <laughs> SpongeBob is. Like there's no way to undersell SpongeBob. He's not a fad. He's been around for 20 years. Um, and so I, I really got into SpongeBob. And I think the cutoff point for me when I kind of dipped out of it was after this the first movie 2004 i think is when it came out and then that's when they went into the real wacky weird episodes of like of uh just really goofy stuff you know is that fair to say Uh, and yes and there's a reason for that and that's because after the first movie had finished right that's when all the creators the original people kind of left and went on to move on to different things right really um yeah and actually the first movie spongebob was just supposed to end after that but viacom saw it like you said he's so recognizable they had a mickey mouse that is something that any any company would die for to have their own mickey mouse yeah so viacom nickelodeon Mm -hmm. saw this they're like we we can't get rid of this character. This character is too big. We need to keep pushing him. Yeah. And they've tried to cancel him like three, five times. But no, it's just at, at this point, it's just too big. They can't get rid of this guy. So they, they have to keep making stuff for him. Uh, yeah. Good, bad. You know, there's. Yeah, there's definitely vibes to that, too. You know, <laughs> there's such a and there's such like a weird kind of, I would say, gap almost of you think of 2004 to the newer the second movie, which is 2015, right? That's so long. That's an 11 year gap of no movies. Like what, what happened to SpongeBob in those years? I don't even really know. I mean, he had games, the show was still going, I guess, but uh, it's kind of, it's really strange that he was out of the, the theaters for so long. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there um, because that's when they tried to push during that, those two time gaps, right? That's when they tried to push SpongeBob for their show specifically and not introduce him into cinemas. He had, you know, specials, so to speak, like Elena Square Panis, uh, the 11th, the 7th anniversary, Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that, um, where they wanted to celebrate SpongeBob but not bring him into the cinema. Mm -hmm. And at that point, past season four, in my opinion, is when he started to go downhill. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of his characterizations between him and all of his different characters really started to flanderize, right? And they just tried to stick on specific like characteristics with these these characters, right? And it wasn't until the second movie where they actually brought in Steven Hillenburg back um, wow. to help with that. Yeah, and it he SpongeBob actually from that point started rising up a bit in um in quality in his uh, show um so yeah i think it had like at season eight and then to season nine it started getting good again in my mm. opinions personally that's um, cool you know that's just me <laughs> i gotcha and that's that's mm. what i would say the first couple seasons of spongebob classic memeable good everything Fantastic. like perfect um and that humor carries over into the movie i i forgot about the special things there was that remember that that um Seek super secret lost episode or, or whatever of SpongeBob. It wasn't that yes, the one I with do. him dancing down the street or whatever, doing the walk. 
And then that was the end of it, and everyone was like, "What? That's the episode? That was ridiculous." I don't. Oh, it was um, so good. And then that was the beat. Was the um, was the ten thousand before comedy? Was that like just an episode, or was that like a special? That was a special. Yeah. Um, Okay. When they went back in time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I thought so. I thought there was some like growing up. There was like some hype about that being like a a special episode or something. Like I saw commercials like. Yeah. Whenever Patchy the Pirate comes on, that's when you mm. know it's, you, you got something good, right? Okay. When he introduces something and he, he hops on, he's like, oh, we're going to go back in time to right. watch some prehistoric. And yeah, that was a great special, by the way. I love yeah. that one so much. Yeah, it was good. And that I think that's the, yeah. isn't that the, that's the, the, the Squidward's future meme too, right? Future it, it happens in that no, one. No, no, that's a different episode. Oh, man, really? Maybe we're thinking about two different ones. Yeah, because there's the one where Squidward travels in time uh, uh, to the past. And then there's one that just takes place in oh, time in the past. Where you they are right. Where they discover fire. Yeah, you yeah. are right. The whole episode is the past. And that is just a snippet of that one episode. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, okay. That All was right. a good one too. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Well, that's kind of our uh, oh, that's some just random discussion of SpongeBob through the years. So now let's just focus on the first movie, I guess. What I want to do is rank them. Like uh, you, we'll talk about them one, two, three. Then we'll kind of give our rankings of what we think is the best and and in what order. And then I guess during the discussions of the movies, we can just talk about whatever you know, whatever we liked, whatever we didn't like, blah blah blah. Um, so I'll let you. I guess I'll I'll give you the floor first. I'll let you talk about the first movie, whatever you got to say, like review, uh, plot, syn- synopsis, things you notice, you know, whatever. Jamin, this is going to be so easy for me. Okay. The first movie mm-hmm. is my favorite movie of all time. I, when I was younger, when I had it on DVD, I played it because it was like the only DVD I had. So mm-hmm. I played it all the time. I remember every single word to this movie. <laughs> no exaggeration i at one point on on my show i i'm so glad i didn't do this but i was going to recite the entire movie by memory as an asmr you should so have done that why it was just too awkward man i could not do it i'm like nope yeah i got like probably 25 percent done with the movie and i was like no i can't do this dude that <laughs> is I, <laughs> from memory that's insane <laughs> I, and like i i guarantee you there's some people that don't believe me out there but i legit i remember this whole movie word for word that's how much i've resonated with this movie how many times i've watched it but my my beginnings with this movie start way back in preschool where i saw all the ads for it i'm like mom i would do anything to watch this movie so she's like okay um if you get a a on this test or 100 percent uh for your spelling test i will take you and the family out to go watch this movie i have never been more motivated to study ever before in my life than that uh that test so i like <laughs> read up all the words i did it and like i think i got a 97 percent or something and then mom's like all right that's good enough we're going to the movie I'm <laughs> so excited and that was just one of the happiest moments of my life was watching that in movie theaters with, with my family. And um, the movie itself is, I think, SpongeBob at its finest, mm-hmm. uh, in, my, in, in my opinion. It is an amazing movie by every means. Um, and, oh, man, to start with any, like, specific place on how I feel about it, the, the whole journey that they have to take with this movie is is one that i can resonate very well with right as like as as he he's a child right he's just a man child and they don't want to give him responsibilities like being manager right um and mr krabs (laughs) mr krabs right and to kind of prove yourself um in that sense as well to be like hey yeah i am i am a i am a kid and then that's okay. It's okay to be a kid. Yeah. Um, it's okay to have that inner child in you. And um, but it's also you know facing adversity. Th- this whole adventure that they go on is absolutely beautiful, in my opinion. Uh, every step they take is just so well paced. The, mm-hmm. the whole movie is yes. absolutely it, fantastic. It's the best. It's the best structured. The best paced has the best message. The best story of any of the movies. We'll go through like. 
it for real is the best just streamlined everything it, it hits all the beats it's easiest to watch let me tell you that for sure absolutely absolutely it's got I, the I most funny tonight. it's got the most it's the most it's the funniest movie too to be honest with absolutely. you <laughs> and and uh at the at the time heart jerker as well like yeah I, the yes moment where... the pirates the crying in the theater that's so <laughs> good. good i so i good. cried the first All time right, i watched the it the tear of the goofy goobers <laughs> it's the tear of the goofy goobers <laughs> <laughs> it's so good oh my god and i i think steven hillenberg himself wanted to challenge himself with this movie as well he wanted to try to push spongebob and patrick in a way that he wasn't sure he could push himself Mm -hmm. um but he did a phenomenal job like i i can't recall any moment in any spongebob episode where these characters had this much i guess drive and like stakes you know Mm -hmm. the the stakes were high with this movie yeah um i mean it was just so good (laughs) yeah it's it's very it's very good um i love the cast you know you add scarlett johansson um, I think Jeffrey Tambor, Tambor is he is the is he, is uh, King Neptune and I his figured, yeah. King Neptune's voice. And the, it's just a great performance. Mindy is uh, an adorable character. She's like the and the best portrayal of Neptune because we have Neptune in the third movie as well. And he, pff, he's not that great of a villain in that in that no, one. No, uh, he has nothing. Not. I mean, he has nothing really to do. He just steals Gary. But or he doesn't even steal Gary. He, Plankton just gives it to him. But yeah, um, but. He has the bald me. And there's just so many memes in it too. The bald Look, my the eyes. Whole, yeah, it's the whole great. movement of having it move based off of him being bald is so just SpongeBob within itself, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's that's how the whole conflict arrives. Is he's bald? Uh oh, doesn't have a crown. Yeah. Normally that wouldn't be a big thing, but he's bald. <laughs> it's yeah, just it's Plan Z, man. Plan Z, I love you. Plan Z is the best plan. Oh my gosh! And, and the Plankton pa- is the most savage villain. He makes everyone his slave in this movie. Literal slave. They're literal slaves, and I was like, oh my god, I forgot how like demented and evil Plankton is in this movie. Everyone's it's his slave. So evil. Oh, it's it's. It's awful. And the, the whole I, I remember that scene where Squidward figures out Plankton Plankton's uh plan. So he yeah, you know, he puts a stop, he goes and he confronts him. And then the moment where all the helmets just fall down on all the characters and they all rise up under his control just terrified me <laughs> to no yeah. end. Oh man, just so good. It's so good. Yeah. And I I also I I'm gonna have to agree with the casting. Uh, even like one of the most the more awkward character, which was um, uh, David Hasselhoff. Oh yeah, right, I, right. I feel like he fits right in. You yeah, know, that with, was with that's a great cast. cameo. Yeah, it's such a good cameo. And um, they, and we can't forget the the uh, with with recent news happening. Um, you know, Dennis played the gruesome evil killer. Um, is played by a now accidental killer in real life you know the um with i didn't alec, know a- this alec baldwin what i had no idea well yeah. i i guess i don't know who alec here, let me, I'm, I'm sorry i'm, I'm totally gonna no nah, i don't want to google it yet <laughs> well i'll just tell you I'll, I'll google you, it on you know phone. the 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 rust drama with the accidental gunshot on the set of that movie it's been pretty huge news I don't know how I've missed all of this here. I got to look him up. Oh, what did he play in? Oh my! Um, he's played in lots of things. I can't think of. I, I mean, yeah, like Thirty Rock to, yeah. is like his big thing. But yeah, look it up real quick because. Oh, he's in Boss Baby. What Beetlejuice? What? <laughs> Are you kidding? He's in Madagascar. Yeah. Oh my gosh! He's Dennis in in the SpongeBob movie and the first wow. his introduction. His introduction, Plankton says, "Like, I hired a, He's a vicious, cold-blooded character." Yeah. Killer, yeah, yeah, and then it goes to him, and he's like, Arr. "And I'm like, oh my god, that's the vicious killer is Alec Baldwin, <laughs> and he just accidentally killed someone in real life." And I was like, "That's horrible." That's I'm oh I'm surprised no gosh. one's made that a meme yet, but there it is, internet folks. That you know, hey. whatever. But wow. yeah, that was when I I oh, was god. like. Because I, I had to look it up. because like, oh, my God, I heard his voice. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember. 
That's Alec Baldwin, I think, and it is. Totally. Oh my is. gosh, that's so wild. Oh my god. The, my, all right, my favorite fact about this movie, though. Yes. Um. Again, it is uh, David Hasselhoff. So yes. they wanted to film the part where he's on his back, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, with David, but it was taking way too long, and David's like. Um, David said he could do it. They're like, no, we can't do this to you, David. So they ended up making a giant replica of David Hasselhoff <laughs> for this film. Ha- have you heard of this? Yes. It's I've... huge. The thing is giant. Yes. And I think like, you told me about this. I think we talked about so this the last time. Tivoli? I think. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Somehow, it's because so... I remember hearing this. <laughs> it's so big. It's huge. And then they decide, they're like, okay, uh, we're just going to throw it away. And David's like, actually, can I keep this? And they're like, sure. David has it for years. um, And then for a charity, he decides to sell it. And then at the last minute, he's like, I'm sorry, I can't get rid of this. And he retracts it back, which is, you know. And there's got to be a picture of this, right? Is there a picture of this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There is 100%. It's it's huge. It's giant. Uh, But yeah, you, you ever just look at that thing, you're like, they made this. From scratch wow. for David Hasselhoff. That's Amazing. lovely. That is lovely. It's really good. Yeah. Um, I I had uh, I had some other things to say about the movie, but I don't remember exactly what they were. I think it's just like it's just like the the messages of the movies are are interesting to me because the this one is you 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 said it right away. It's like oh you you know growing up or being not trying to be being a man or not being a kid like SpongeBob and Patrick. They want to be men. Now that we're men, they don't want to be kids anymore, but they they do realize, you know, a kid can do all of this. You know, we got to shell city. We rescued, we, we got the crown and saved the day, whatever the song was. Mm-hmm. And they overcome so much and uh, they're all friends and yay. We did a good job. And Absolutely. It's, and it's a nice message and it's fun and it's heartfelt and you just leave it, leave the theater like, ah, and all the pirates are there and they, it's great. The, the, the movie I always remembered always wanted me wanting more. And that's, that's a great place to end a movie is to leave your audience wanting more. And sometimes it's even more hard to critique a film like this because it's, it's so easy to just enjoy. Right. Mm-hmm. It, I can point at all of its like all the things that it did correctly uh, because literally every step of the way, this movie was just fantastic from start to finish, in my opinion. Um, and even like visually, this movie's gorgeous. Even today, this is gorgeous. It's a, yeah. it's a gorgeous film. Yeah. It and is. I mean, people love it. it. You, one of the biggest thing that's happening right now in the SpongeBob community is a bunch of people are reanimating this, uh, this movie. Um, which I'm super excited about. It's supposed to come out next month, uh, which it seems wow. super cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, to, it's just, what a it's... different style or updated? Yeah, uh, they just reanimate it in a bunch of different styles. So a oh, bunch of okay. animators get like seconds right. of the movie and they I get have to you. animate it. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. you. I know what you're talking about. Like they cut together the, all the scenes that they did, like a super cut mm-hmm. of the. Absolutely. That is really cool. That would be so cool to see. It's uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. But yeah, I mean, it's just. It's what more can you say? It's a fantastic film. Um, yeah, just legacy wise, it it's left an impact on not just people that love the show, but in general. Like there, it's memed all to get out, right? The the yes. Patrick Star meme with his mouth wide open. Yes, yep. People love that scene. Yeah, that's and that's what I have to say is the best thing about this movie. And what reminds me so much of the original SpongeBob is that all of the hilarious different ways that Patrick and SpongeBob are drawn. Like they, all their facial expressions are just so like SpongeBob. Like that's That's what makes me laugh. That's what makes me laugh the most out of all of the things they do is they're just reactions to different things. Uh, Like they have the scene where they get, they get um, ice cream wasted and they're, and they're just so like gruff and gross looking. (laughs) And and he's like, (laughs) I'm a man. And like he, he puts his finger down on the floor and it goes point and, and the sound effects are so and good this man <laughs> has something to say to you <laughs> yeah it's so, so funny it was a raspberry yeah oh man it's so fun it's and that's their and all their that's the that's what's so like sticks out the most to me because i watched these kind of out of order i watched i, I didn't plan on re-watching this one 
because I've seen it so many times. I was like, I know yeah, this one. Absolutely. And then I watched the second one. And then my, uh, you know, my family was there, fiance and her daughter. And then I watched that, the second one. And I was like, okay. And then they're like, let's, uh, she said, Megan's like, let's watch the first one. I said, okay, we'll watch the first one. So we put the first one on. And then I watched the third one today, just out an hour ago. So, yeah. So the, I didn't end up rewatching the first one. And I've only seen, a, I only seen the rap battle from the second movie. That's all I've ever seen of it. Because they said, hey, there's a rap battle in the second Spongebob movie. And I said, what? So no way. And I Googled it. And sure enough, OK, there's a rap battle. And then I never, battle. never saw anything except probably the trailer of the newest one. So they, I had fresh eyes for these two. So I guess unless you have anything else to say about the first movie, because um, we could go scene by scene and talk about everything course, that we love. But I don't know if we I mean, it's fun to reminisce and discuss, but maybe we should. Of course. We should uh, hit the other two as well, you know. The other two, it, it because th- there's some problems with the other two, so that that one's gonna be a little more easy to uh, t- just critique, in my opinion. Yeah, let's and hear it for I, it. what about the second one? Sponge out of water. Sponge out of water. I actually did not watch this movie in theaters uh, because I it was at a time in my life where I'm like. No, I can take a pause on SpongeBob. I'll uh, I'll just wait for it to come out on DVD. And you know that was the period at when I, which I watched it. And the the whole advertisement gimmick of it was they're superheroes now, right? Right, and they're in CGI oh. instead of two D. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess that can be interesting. Um, but in my opinion, that was the most uninteresting part of that film was when they were all superheroes. I'm like, I could not care more about this scene. Um, and every other thing besides that, I was, actually, I was actually kind of into, um, except for the, the main character or main character, the, the, the main villain, right? Which is, which is a pirate. And as soon right. as he walked on screen, I was like, they, they're going for this Jack Sparrow kind of guy. Yeah. Why didn't they just cast Johnny Depp and make it a, a big reference? Like Maybe, right? I mean, that, that might have been even more fun. Yeah. But I just, I feel like, the, the, all right, the first scene that he is in, he is mm-hmm. going through all these like little booby traps and he's mm-hmm. just like dancing around them. And it was just so awkward. <laughs> I didn't like it. I did not like that scene. And then he like oh. speaks to the skeleton. He's like, oh, can I, what? The book? I can have it? Oh, don't mind if I do. And it's like, I I, I don't know. It, it felt like they really wanted this Jack Sparrow kind of it's inspired uh, character. Mm-hmm. Um, but in my opinion, I, maybe they didn't really need it. You know, I, I, it's a little too much on the nose for me. Um, Fine enough character, but by far, like, maybe my least favorite villain that they've tried to introduce. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I the, I, I applaud them for doing something different with the beginning. Like, sure. this movie is wild. This movie is bonkers. It's off. It's craziness. Everything. Everything is so different. And it jumps around. There's so many different things going on that there's like no structure to this movie at all. Yeah. Um, it's almost kind of like two to three different movies in a way. Yes. They start it, off it, with the pirate real life going and uh, which I didn't mind. I was like, oh, this is interesting and weird. And Antonio yeah. Antonio Banderas is like he's playing a pirate man. And I was like, oh, all right, this is an OK way to start the movie. Like, where's this going to go? Mm. You know, like, what is this? Like I can accept this as an intro because they do live action intros for like every movie. Uh, so like, what are you going to do? Okay. He has the book. What happened to the, what happened to the formula Did he, cause it disappears, you know? And I was like, what happened to that? And then they don't really ever say what happened to it. Was it that he, he wrote that he got it in that book and it like reappeared and, and he had it and he made the, but it disappears and they don't ever really talk about where it went. You are so right. They never really kind of 
dive into that i guess he just writes it out of existence and says that he has it and then it disappears in that moment and then they go back in time to like they're so convoluted and it's like you are so right i didn't even realize that that's just such an awkward that is so awkward yeah (sighs) oh oh my god no you are 100 right that is just so weird but and that scene too i they, they introduced this joke uh, with like Patrick or uh, Plankton and SpongeBob, uh, like going off of each other inside their own heads, um, and then they do like this torture scene with Plankton, which I the, <laughs> oh, again yeah. funny. And yeah. uh, so, at at the beginning, right where SpongeBob and Plankton are go like battling each other, um, it mm-hmm. I I find it very funny. You know, it I thought it was a good scene by by all means. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they kind of introduce SpongeBob and Plankton uh, teaming up, and that's kind of right. the whole gimmick of this film. Yes, and teamwork. I TA yeah, work. yeah, TA work. I think it actually works out very well. I like. I really enjoy seeing SpongeBob and Plankton work off each other because yes. that's not something that's introduced too well. But they make it work very fine enough, right? It it works mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a- absolutely. And I'm I'm glad that they made that a staple of this film because by all means that's probably where i had the most enjoyment of this uh was them working together right yes you know what do you know what my i'm glad that they because they what it's so crazy spongebob has a couple of things it has crusty crab uh crabby patties and then like it has your your characters right so, like, what mm-hmm. do you do with with this? Like, they've explored these stories in the episodes. And I feel like they're like, well, for the big movies, we have to kind of keep we can't go like really, really too um, wacky or to have like this. I, I, it's so weird. There's not very many things they can do. But in this movie, they do all the weird and wacky stuff. And it's just like everywhere. But I do like they that, do too much. Yes, they. The, yes, the but the but I do love the the plankton SpongeBob dynamic, like the the enemy and friend teaming up because they have a great episode with they have they even try to do another song they, you know they have the F is for friends that do stuff together that episode is amazing, and so they yeah. even try another they try a teamwork song which they do have a teamwork song which I don't it's not as good as catchy as you know the fun the song but absolutely, absolutely but still but still their so their dynamic is a good place to start with the movie, but it just doesn't really go. I mean, it goes all the way through the movie, which is the, you know, the first movies like, okay, we're, we're going to be being a kids. Okay. And then this one's like teamwork. And then the third one has like, what message does it have? Courage. Like courage. courage. Yes. I completely forgot about it until I rewatched it like an hour ago. I was like, Oh yeah, that was a, kind of the message of the third one. Yeah, um, I, w- I thought it was gonna be like friendship because Gary and, yeah. <laughs> and and SpongeBob, but um, not really. It's so awkwardly placed. But okay, all right. Well, go, let me let me let me hit this one last thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Krabby Patties are cocaine in the SpongeBob universe, and why does it have to be that way? I that's my <laughs> biggest problem with this is that when there's after the Krabby Patties are gone, it turns into <laughs> Mad Max Hellscape. <laughs> dystopia and like and it's and it's a funny gag because it's like snap sure. and they're all turned into like but it's so weird to see them in this bdsm leather gear all they are all of our characters i was like what Ooh. is happening <laughs> i was like is this real yeah is this real spongebob right now this is what's gonna happen in this movie and that's why this movie is just what it's so wild there's so many crazy it's, stuff that happens in this movie it really is and and i think the best way to look at this movie is to see how it's structured because there are it it does go 75 percent well and yes. then 25 but so structurally right so plankton didn't do it they decided to team up mm-hmm. and then the the town just goes freaking ape right they want to kill plankton <laughs> yeah and because the Patties. only one yeah right spongebob's the only one with morals here though and that's the only thing that kind of really irritated me at first with this film right. and then later i discovered that there's gonna be other things that irritate me with this film <laughs> uh, but the, so everyone is just so I, I, 
maniacal like they lack all morals inside this film it's almost very like i don't i don't know how to describe it and the driving force right is because we are out of Krabby patties so we are going to act like animals and right. you know spongebob wants to have some sort of like moral code here and like decide this this is this is where we're gonna go with this um right. and the my my biggest thing that really irritated me was when he goes to patrick right and yes Patrick's like sorry man i'm hungry i'm turning my back on you right that hurt me so bad yeah. i was so emotionally distraught from that i'm like are you serious he's supposed to be his just Best friend. friend to the end i will yeah. always be with you no matter what unless Krabby patties aren't involved which like let's take the message of the first movie let's take that throw it out the throw it out the window because they literally just like they go so back on that because patrick always had spongebob's back in that film and mm -hmm. here it's like you simply just remove the the act of a Krabby patty it's gone you know yeah. And everyone's that way in this film. Yeah, I wish and I love the the first film does not have anything to do with Krabby Patties. And I and uh the, the second two they do have they have like that's the whole thing is Krabby Patties. Um mm. I just uh it's uh um <laughs> sorry, I, I, I lost what I wasn't even gonna say, but just no I was gonna say though, I, that's exactly what came to my brain whenever you said. Uh, you start talking about what was irritated you and the the Patrick that was in my head. I was like, yeah, when Patrick didn't didn't help his buddy, I was like, that's messed up, dude. I can't believe that you did that. How dare you? And they had at so many points to redeem themselves throughout this film. Um, yeah, like, uh, like I get it. There needs to be a conflict, right? So yeah. th there has to be a conflict, and the the whole idea is to have SpongeBob and Plankton together, so you can't introduce Patrick. So like, all right. That's fine. But it's just so out of character. I wish, like, even if they just imprisoned Patrick or something, they could have done something a little different instead of just having this mean spiritness behind it. Um, what else happens yeah, in I this movie? Can you, like, it's so disjointed in my brain. I can't even put together what what order these things go in. They Right. Time so machine, go back in time. Um, weird, weird dimensional, interdimensional space dolphin. And then dolphin, they go bubbles, yeah. bubbles. Then where do they go bubbles, after that? Bubble the dolphin. Uh, so I to structure this right. Uh, Plankton tries to steal it. Formula disappears. Everyone wants to kill Plankton. SpongeBob wants to have some form of moral code. SpongeBob tries to go around town and like recruit all these people. Yes. But all of them are like, no, no, thank you. And that, that's the awkward part, right? Because he goes to Sandy, he goes to Patrick, he goes to Gary, and none of this resolves anything. It almost feels like it's a way to um, pace the movie and like have more time in there. And they're like, finally, mm -hmm. none of this is going to work. We're alone. Let's make a time machine. We need to go save Karen because she's the only computer powerful enough to, yes. um, to do this. And, and that and Karen part dies. right there. Yeah, yeah. Where they like go to try to get Karen. I feel like there's so many good like gags there. And I, I, I do want to emphasize, there are some good points inside this film. There really are. There are some parts that I really enjoy about this film. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the pacing, right? So after that, they, mm -hmm. they go through the time machine. They come in contact with bubbles, which again, feels like just this weird just meshy like oh we need to fill in some time okay let's have them i don't know visit with an interdimensional dolphin or whatever um which just seems weird and then they go into the future and then they go into the past and then they grab the oh, yeah. whatever right so it's right. just the future it's, where it's patrick's there it's, with a beard yeah 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 it's uh. just it's everywhere at, at a certain point um and then at some point they try to kill SpongeBob. Do you remember that? Uh, they try to sacrifice him. Oh yeah, I do remember yeah. something about a sacrifice. What they? Oh, they try to crush him with something, and then with the bun. Thank God that is... Mr. Krabs is strong enough to destroy it. He goes breaks it. Yeah. Well, the, the whole point because they smells like Krabby Patty. 
Yeah, he smells a Krabby Patty. Yeah, I but this, once yeah. that hits, it becomes a completely different film. Completely different. At that exact point, like I got whiplash from that mm-hmm. from that one scene alone. It was like, oh, we're gonna kill SpongeBob. Oh wait, never mind. Let's go ahead and go on an entirely new adventure yeah. with an entirely different structure. Yeah, that's what is- the point where I'm like what is going on what do they have they have like some kind of uh, something comes and gives them powers what happened what gives them powers again it's bubbles it's bubbles oh bubbles. okay that's how bubbles gets like kind of reintroduced into okay this. that makes sense yeah I, for a second i thought it was some, i was thinking it was some kind of like weird genie or something but okay. well i oh no no it's bubbles that gives them the power to breathe on land and yes. then once they get the book Oh, they have the pages. That's right. They can yeah, write they have the page in. and they write the, the different ending. Okay. And there's see, see, there's just so much in this. And there's so much going on. And they advertised it as superheroes and CGI. And that's only 10 minutes of the movie. That's only 10 minutes of the movie. But even then, that's like 10 minutes that I didn't even care about at all. Yeah. I'm like, the, I think what was working with this movie was SpongeBob and Plankton. They probably could have fleshed that out a little more, and this probably would have been at least a decent film. Yeah. And I, I guess it, in a way, it is a decent film. It just feels unstructured. Um, yeah, with all of its entirety, everything it tries to do, uh, it just kind of jumps all over the place. Yes, um, it does. Mm-hmm. It doesn't match but, too well together. There's too no. much, but it does. But I do like it, the absurdity of it all, because it does feel sure. like it's super absurd and i think the movie is kind of aware of it being absurd but that doesn't make it okay or good that you're aware of it being absurd you know like you still have to make this kind of connect some way or flow (laughs) and it just kind of doesn't um yeah so okay but this is i remembered something that i was that i had Uh, earlier earlier i had like a blank blank a blanked out but can you can you put together like a timeline of what of what takes place where like these movies technically probably aren't canonically correct right like the timeline like the first movie and then the second movie are these movies their own different universes basically kind of um so actually the third movie completely that's actually takes place in a different timeline which is kind of wild um what makes sense first movie had to think so yeah Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. First movie has always been the the final episode. Con- like Stephen Hillebert's oh. like this is the final episode. No matter what happens, this will always be the So last once that thing Ocean that Man hits, huh? Ocean yep. Man, take me by the me by the I want that I want that song to be um yeah. at my funeral because <laughs> I think it's the most beautiful end to a song ever, right? Yeah. It's the be- most it brings it all together, and I'm like, this is what I want to end on is this song right here. <laughs> yeah. So once that, once you hear that 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 Ween tune, you know it's it's that's SpongeBob is SpongeBob's over. That's that's the that's the last episode. But that's, yeah, that's I mean, pretty good. It's comforting. It is. Yeah, it's I it's can a, take it's a beautiful ending. Yeah, yep. absolutely. And so to wrap up on the last SpongeBob movie. Because it's it's just so disjointed. And like you said, there's a rap battle at the end. Which is just the most awkwardly placed thing in the world. Where mm-hmm. it's the seagulls and Bubble the Dolphin uh, mm-hmm. rapping. Which is just, I don't know. But the music talent in this film, yeah. I don't think it's half bad. I, I do kind of like the, yeah, here we go now. Good chain, chain, a double dutch. Yeah, that song, it's alright. I don't mind it. And I, I think back when I looked this up on YouTube, I think because it's in the style of like the epic rap battles, I think it is Epic Lloyd and Nice Peter, right? That do the rap battle. I It might be actually. Like epic I mean, rap it, battles of history, you know, those guys who do that. I yeah, think it's, no, no, it's yeah. those guys that do the rap battle at the end. I would believe it. I honestly would. Or at, at the very least, write it because it mm-hmm. it's not, it's out of place um but not well not a, badly done though not badly done yeah. weirdly enough yeah i like the I, I like the seagulls bars with the like that does the dolphin noise like eh, or whatever you know when he uh-huh. oh when, he, the when they curse yeah they curse <laughs> he does the curse and it like bleeps it out i was like ah references i love it oh my god it's so weird but yeah i mean to to 
apply like a a score on this film. Yes. Like a like a sixty five, right? Yeah, I think it. I think there are a lot of good elements here. It's just muddled down by the just unfocusedness of it all. Um, but I will always like. I will always watch the first movie, but every once in a while, I will watch the second movie just to just to rewatch it. You know, yes. Just visually, fantastic jokes. A lot of them kind of work. Yes. Um, but they just needed to focus and pick a lane inside this film. Um, yeah. If you've ever watched the deleted scenes of this, there are <laughs> so many deleted scenes. They wanted to do so much in oh, this film. No. And wow. it almost feels like they wanted to add this superhero stuff for the marketing marketing team alone. Yeah. Um, which is dumb, in my opinion. Yeah. I think they wanted to make a, a Mad Max style movie to begin with. Because mm. there was so much cut out. There was so much. And I'm like, let's just stick with this idea first. We can make a superhero movie another time. We'll right. make that a, a completely different time. They don't need to be two movies clashed together awkwardly <laughs> yeah i remember when this came out and i uh i saw the trailer and i saw the cgi stuff and i was like nah what'd they do to my boy spongebob you know like it's gotta be it's what gotta be do? it's gotta be 2d you know and everything else and then someone later was talking about it and they're like oh yeah like 80 percent of the movie is 2d and then the last part is cgi and i was like what yeah. you're telling me 80 yeah. percent of this movie i thought it was all cgi and they said, yeah. oh, no, most of it's 2D. And I was like, well, I might actually watch it if it's like that, you know, like and then I and then this is the first time I watched it. And uh, yeah, I it's think all right. It's all right, no. I I think I would definitely rewatch this one more than leading into our new the discussion of the newest one. I definitely watched this one again before I'd watch the newer one. I'll say I'm that to agree with you there. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with you there. Uh, um, and my so, last yeah. point, yes, my last point about the second film, the only like kind of cool fact that I like about this, I, I believe it broke a record. It was one of the first movie to introduce 2D animation, live action, 3D animation, and a small bit of stop motion, um, which is weird, right? So yes. that's the only thing this movie really has going for it is they, they did try a lot of different things. Uh, whether or not it stuck, that's a completely different opinion, you know, but yeah. That does look mm. really great. Like all of the, it does. all of the characters out in the real world and everything, they look really well. Like they look like they're actually there in the world. They move like it. Everything that happens, it sure. does look really well. So I'll give them yeah. points for that. Yeah, I'll definitely. Because that's I'll not, agree with you there. That's not easy to do to like you know, uh, um, whatever you like to put all the characters in there and have them work that well it's very difficult to do i mean i try to do some editing on this channel and i know just by a little bit of what i do trying to get things with the green screen or you know put in there is very it sucks it's challenging but yeah, yeah they made it work okay third film are, are we ready to make that that jump that transition yes are you ready jamin yep oh I'm man ready. uh are you ready <laughs> i i guess hit me with it what you got I don't like this film. <sighs> How? Got a Why? Hot take. <laughs> there are some nice things about it. Yeah. There are uh, the animation. I'm like, okay, I like the animation. Uh, but this entire let's let's get this out of the way first, Jamin. Okay. This entire film is to yes promote Mo yes camp, camp coral. coral. That's it, all this film sets out to do. My, I I yep, I'm with you. 100 percent i was gonna introduce it failed. as <laughs> i was gonna introduce it as spongebob the third movie aka camp coral advertisement camp coral you have failed as a concept or as a film entirely if your idea is just to promote something yeah and and not introduce somewhat of it there, there was a little bit of a message here but my only like let's compare this to the lego movie right okay that movie's fantastic Mm -hmm. and like it's a big commercial for legos. For, um for legos <laughs> yeah. but they make that work they make that work um yeah. and it's not even like hammering in the idea of like buy legos buy legos buy legos 
this film is hammering in the idea of watch our second show, watch our second so watch our second show. Paramount Plus Original. Woo! <laughs> yeah, when guess what? I, I got a subscription for Paramount Plus because instead of that's the only place you can watch it. Um mm -hmm. this this movie. Uh yep. because unless you want to buy it for twenty dollars on Amazon or whatever. But you can, but you can only watch it like uh, streaming anywhere on Paramount Plus. So mm -hmm. I got five dollars into this. I watched the first movie. I watched this movie. So I think I got my money's worth for Paramount Plus yeah. for this month. So here we go. Sure, absolutely. And then just cancel the <laughs> cancel it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I actually I did watch um I did watch Camp Coral, um and it's all right. How it, many episodes? It's, is it's it? okay. There's. 27 i think what 24 maybe yeah yeah there's oh my god it's a full season yeah that is that's yep. way more than i thought but you know what you know what's sad though is that my favorite what's parts that? of this my favorite parts of this movie are the camp curl parts <laughs> so i i'm gonna have to agree with you there um like because they, but why the voice like it, are they afraid of their their olding their elderly voice actors that are aging they have to they have to make them you know, young kid actors now is that so sad it's so sad. Well, they, in, inside the show, they actually yeah. use the, the actual actors. Like no way. SpongeBob and Patrick. Tom Kenny yeah. and all their Tom voices. Tom Kenny plays as himself. Sandy plays as himself. Even though they're little kids? It's, yeah. Oh, my That's God. That's so weird. I thought the, so I thought the little weird. kid voices were fine. I was like, oh, this is interesting. They, yeah. you know, like, they, I love Sandy's uh, little Southern girl in the movie. Oh, her little Southern mm -hmm. girl voice was so cute. I was like, mm -hmm. and they're so cute as little kids. And I can see the appeal of the show. I'm like, and as you know, them all meeting and everything, that's probably really good. Or that's, that's probably like the, I don't know what the show, you could talk more about how the show is. Like if it's as good as those little bits that they have in the movie. No, not really. <laughs> Dang. It's not bad. It by far, it, it's not bad. I guess it's just the uh, novelty of seeing these characters that we love as like younger kids and all meeting. And that was probably the novelty of it. Me seeing that was like, oh, that's really cute and adorable. I'm mm -hmm. glad I got to see these characters meet as little kids. But once that wears off, the you know, that's the only thing that probably made me invested in those little scenes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there is some conflict there uh, because as a lot of people have pointed out that sandy met spongebob in an episode in the first season in, in an episode already so like the <laughs> yeah. idea that she already met her him inside of right. this and they, they address that in the show and it's not bad is it they make a uh, make Coral. it a funny meta meta reference or they they introduce the idea of time Amnesia? travel and oh my in God. a new timeline that's yeah so oh, this okay, is actually okay. a completely different timeline okay this Ooh, film makes sense and also the Camp Coral timeline. So it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's definitely, okay. it's strange. So that goes but, into I mean, my, yeah, that goes into my question earlier about the different universes for each movie. Cause there's certain things that happen that should affect things in the rest of the SpongeBob verse or whatever, but, mm -hmm. but who cares about all that? I don't know. It's, it's so weird. And if, if we thought that the second movie was disjointed, this one, yeah, is that in in a <laughs> mile a half in a sprinkle of awkward? I, it's just I got like four words for you: zombie pirates <laughs> western bar. <laughs> what was with the zombie scene? <laughs> what was with the zombie pirate scene? They're so it's scary. Not even being there at all? Yeah, and it's I a dream, I, anyways. It's just a pad on time and have Snoop Dogg do a song or whatever. It's so weird. And it goes against everything Steven Hillenburg introduced with the first film. But I, I will get back to that because I sent that scene without SpongeBob inside it. I sent it to a bunch of friends. I'm like, I will pay you. I will send $20 in your bank account <laughs> if you can tell me what movie this is. <laughs> None of them are like, I don't know, man. Oh, my <laughs> I, I gosh. Have no idea. That's like, amazing. SpongeBob. They're like, it's not SpongeBob. I'm like, it's SpongeBob. And it just makes and it's so crazy that that's the scene that I sent to you in a in a Twitter <laughs> message. Like, what the fuck is this? As soon as you said, what the fuck is this? I'm like, he's watching the the, the cowboy zombie ghost scene, isn't he? <laughs> and it, and I love to see Keanu and it's always good. But like, why the fuck does he have to be in this tumbleweed the whole movie? I don't know why, but it, it does look good, though. Like the his his head placement and in, in, in the world. Yeah. 
It, I Absolutely. guess it probably has something to do with the, the rig they had him in to like shoot uh-huh. his face is why the tumbleweed's always there. And it looks nice, sure. but like, why the fuck is he always in a tumbleweed? I don't. It couldn't just be like a floating head or like appears and disappears. But yeah, whatever. It's, so it's kooky. I guess I sure. always remember that part, the tumbleweed. Yeah. But is that um... so? I mean, okay. So let let's go back to the first film and introduce this. How David Hasselhoff got introduced, right? Yes. Just a quick scene. Super easy. They kind of like work it in. It was super fun, right? Yeah. But here, they just have Snoop Dogg because Snoop Dogg. Show up. And SpongeBob doesn't even reference him or talk to him or nothing, right? No. It's like completely disjointed. They, they just had him here just to have him here. And it's like, okay. It, and Danny just Trejo. because. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so bizarre. He's there for like and, a minute and he dies. It's okay. I know. They accidentally kill him. <laughs> and that scene in general <laughs> Is just bizarre, and they're also <laughs> vampires, I guess, because the sunlight I kills them. I don't know. <laughs> it's so weird. So why does the sunlight kill zombies? I, it, they must be vampires, I guess. It's a funny reference, maybe to like Danny Trejo's in a bunch of Robert Rodriguez films, and Robert Rodriguez directed, you know, Dawn, uh, Dust Till Dawn, which is zombies or has vampires in it. I don't know, but yeah, eh, maybe I don't know and who let's... directed this, but. Let's take that scene and imply it in the universe of like what it's trying to represent in the universe, right? So that okay. whole scene is to uh, illustrate SpongeBob getting courage or having him go on this like slight side quest to achieve courage, which is the whole thing about this movie. I don't know. Uh, right. Because I, I completely forgot that he, he didn't have courage and that is what he was doing in this. Even he didn't do anything to illustrate that he had courage. He accidentally killed this guy. And he was mm-hmm. like, cool, now you have the coin. Right. But he didn't true. do anything. He just accidentally killed someone. He didn't express getting courage or anything. He right. just did it. He didn't stand up for himself. No, no. I just, I don't understand your goals and motives in this film. Film? They walked out of the place and they are like, hey, we did our task. And it's like, yay. <laughs> Here's your coin, you know, <laughs> and it was coin. and they wake up from the dream and there wasn't a dream after all. And I don't know. It Weird and wacky. Just, they had to fill some time. They're like, ah, movie's too short. We have to put oh, something in the short. middle. Um, uh, uh, cowboys, <laughs> uh, got zombies. Hit yes. up, call Snoop Dogg. We need him in here tomorrow. <laughs> you got Snoop Dogg on the line. I need him stat. <laughs> the marketing team. We can put yeah. this in the trailer. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who else we got? Uh, Danny Trejo's here. Put him in there. He's Del Tra- Diablo. He's Get Diablo. Him put him in there. <laughs> yeah. I love that Keanu Reeves was in this. It just, and I it, actually don't mind him. It was all right. I was like, okay. Yeah. He's, and his just, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. His just silly delivery of lines like, okay. <laughs> he's like, guys, you need the coin now. Um, I you guess. Know, okay. I get sure. <laughs> I didn't mind Keanu Reeves yeah. in this film. I, I, I it, it, it's awkward, but I enjoy. I definitely enjoyed him too. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just. Yeah. It is whole... the not. I said it once. It's the novelty. It's the novelty of. Oh, it's Keanu Reeves, and he looks like John Wick. He has the same hair and everything. It's. Just, I just say, well, well, John Wick is is SpongeBob spirit guide. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Absolutely. And That's my head cannon. So, absolutely absolutely and the whole the whole idea of this film is that spongebob needs to find gary right yeah they're best Um, buds and i love that part i wish it was just that focused he wants gary absolutely he loves gary because it's like your it it is like it shows like a bond with your pet like there's Mm -hmm. a good dynamic there which i really love because you know i have pets i have Love my dogs and everything. I wish they would have just I will explored, do anything for my dog. I wish they would explore that as the whole center heart of the movie, but they don't really. And there's a part where no. they go into the town and they start partying and they play like Live in the Vida Loca. I will admit that some of the songs, they, they play a lot of pop songs in here or whatever. And I was like, okay, you big budget movie, play these copyright songs. But those are like the the parts where I was like, okay, yeah, I wish I just want to hear the song and they cut the song on. I'm like, oh, guys, I could listen to the song. I don't want to go back sure. to this movie now. Just play the play sure. SpongeBob with the mood with like, the music on. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's just it even then 
Steven Hillenburg, so th- this whole film is for Steven Hillenburg, but Steven Hillenburg didn't really want this kind of music inside yeah. it. So he made his own music the, for all the other he movies. He made his own music. He wanted weird and lesser known people. That's why he got Ocean Man, right? That's right. why he got, um, there's this one song in the ending credits of uh, Patrick and SpongeBob singing, but he wanted some of these lesser known people uh, because he said, I want you guys' I want you oddballs in my film because this is an odd film. I want you oddballs. But here they're like, well, marketing, we have a big budget. Let's go ahead and grab like well-known right. songs. Um, yeah. And they're great songs. Don't yeah. get me wrong. They're fantastic. And, I love Live a, whatever it, it's called. Yeah, Live a Vida Loca. Inside, outside, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, it reminds me of Shrek too because that's a Shrek song. But they yeah, have like, yeah, yeah, that's what I the whole time that was playing. That's yeah, all I was thinking. Of. Yeah. And then but they're doing the Vegas thing. They're partying and they're doing all the gambling. It's like kind of a mm. fun scene, but it's like you sure. guys, you're supposed to be here to rescue Gary. Cut the shit, you know, but whatever. Absolutely. And let's compare this. I know it's not the first movie, but let's even compare this to the first movie. We got of, Goofy Goober. I'm a Goofy right. Goober. Rock. Rock. <laughs> da, 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 da. It's like iconic. You can't like why, you know, so much such of course. a such a disconnect from that to this you know of course and the whole structure of the first movie of like going on this adventure step by step by step by step but really in this movie they take one step and then they're in their destination and it just seems a little awkward as a buddy movie true they even point out they're like oh it's a buddy movie and then they yes true they have that little reference moment yeah 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 and then they like say as like a quick like shout out like this is how this movie is going to uh how it's going to end we're going to have a fight or something Mm -hmm. and it's just like it's a meta moment Mm -hmm. but it doesn't justify the um just it doesn't justify the moment in my opinion as well when they they have their quick fight because they need to have a quick fight because buddy movies have quick fights right and they immediately have a fight and then i was like yeah guys that's that's not really that's not really how these things work, but then they do have another no. fight later, kind of. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the in the in the one pretty funny scene when he they open the the jail, it's not locked, the and he goes salad. into the he, he goes, goes into the into next one. one. I was like, I okay, like that, that's yeah. pretty funny. I was like, all right, you sure. guys, I wasn't Absolutely. really expecting that. So mm-hmm. there's some funny bits, but uh, but it's mostly just like this one's really kitty too, like. The dialogue and stuff sometimes is really kitty. And every time that Plankton is introduced and his computer wife, Karen, shows up, he's always like, hey, my computer wife, Karen. He always has I to know, say it. It's so awkward. He always has to say it, like, to let people know that they've never seen SpongeBob. Like, what is it, my computer wife, Karen? What do you my, want? My computer wife. Yeah. Introduced in season one, episode two. Or it's just, it's yeah. so awkward. I noticed I that every time, like, in the... I don't know about the first movie if they say it. I'm sure they do. But the but the these two, the the second two movies, every always he he says it. They and I'm like introduce it over and over again. And like he, yeah. he did say it in the first movie, like once maybe. Yeah. But in this movie, I I did notice. Yeah, he said it over and over and over again, and it was just awkward. I'm like, all right. And yeah, they even... let people know. There's some dialogue with like Mr. Krabs and Sandy one time where they're like. I don't even remember what they say, but it's the, the most like simple generic things. Like, what are we going to do? I guess we have to go save SpongeBob. That's what we're going to do. And I'm like, all right, thank you for letting me know exactly what you're going to do. And I'm like, you're, you're, they're just talking to the kids in the audience right now. Mm-hmm. They have to tell they, them directly what's going to happen. So they yep. know. So they're not confused, even though there's a lot of confusing mess in here for no reason. It's a mess. It's a mess of the film. And yeah, no, I'm going to have to agree with you there. They they literally talk down to the audience. They they're like, all right, we need to get this person to this area for this goal. So yeah. let's figure out how we're gonna do that. Uh, okay, we'll just have Sandy and Mr. Krabs talk about it, and then we're gonna. Okay, cool, easy. But well, they do cool. they do retcon. Your biggest complaint for the second movie is that they all figure out, oh, we love SpongeBob. We have to help him. He's our friend. And they go and they save SpongeBob when they mm-hmm. wanted to literally kill him in the in the movie before in this. the second film. Yeah. So they yeah. they were like, maybe that was a little bit too much. Let's make them all really good friends. And yes, they are good friends. And that's that's nice. And you know whatever. But I did I did enjoy that there was a lot less mean spirit spiritness of this film, um, the third one, because yeah, yeah it. 
they they really like oh yeah they're they're best friends right even squidward you know he still he still likes spongebob and all that yeah right so it's... i love that there's a funny part too where he uh where he's listening to like kelpie g or whatever and then like before execution kelpie g and he's like puts his ma- he's like puts his magazine down like oh like he didn't give oh. a fuck like he, <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm talking about like they're all like we gotta say spongebob and he didn't give a fuck and until they, they said kelpie. kelpie g he's like oh kelpie Ooh. g's gonna be there i guess <laughs> yeah. i'll go i guess i I'll guess go. i'll so go yeah just, and I was Absolutely. like, oh, that's pretty funny. Squidward just, just doesn't give give a fuck about anybody. So my, my last big things with this film are the in- the characters that they introduced. Like, there's an awkward robot named Otto. Yes. And his whole joke he does is you're fired. Right. And it's not even that well of a joke, but they bring it, they do it a lot. And it's just like, okay. Yeah. So I guess we can make this one note robot that's going to be super forgettable in a couple of years because literally he only has one joke and it's not that good. Yeah. I had, um, I had thought that he was going to be the central kind of villain or something like before. Cause I knew nothing about this. Uh, I just knew once they started talking about the Gary is missing thing. Um, <clears throat> or once, once um, I started to see the very start of the movie, they connect, they show all this great connection with SpongeBob and, gary and i was like oh i remember from commercials from this gary goes missing i remember that mm-hmm. and so i was like oh mm-hmm. gary goes missing somehow and then they introduced the robot character and i was like oh the robot is gonna have something to do there's gonna be some kind of technology takeover and no <laughs> that doesn't nope. happen and he's just nope. kind of like relegated to he he's, he's here like, for a joke to, he's here to drive spongebob because he doesn't have a license but you mm-hmm. know we, he doesn't have a you don't need a license to drive a sandwich there you go. You don't need a license to drive a sandwich, guys. <laughs> and they introduce they they bring back the car though. That was cool. They bring back the car, which I did like, by the yeah. way. That that tickled my nostalgic bone a bit. But it was just like didn't think they'd use the cart. Okay. The paddy wagon. The yeah. paddy wagon. <laughs> That's great. Uh, but even even the resolution of this film, in my opinion, where they're talking to King Poseidon, right? It's just it. It was Kitty. It was, like you said, Kitty. Where they're like, well, you wouldn't know King Poseidon. You don't have friends. He's like, I got friends. Right. And then that's how they resolve it. And it's like, you're not going to do this to me. This is how you're going to resolve this film. SpongeBob will be your friend. But SpongeBob's the best friend. He's like, he made friends with everybody. He's just the nicest dude. And he's a great friend. He has the power of friendship, which is great and a good message. But sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. Even King, he's just he's a he's an awkward character too. I yeah, like why bring him said, back? Don't yeah. do the don't do the Poseidon Neptune thing again. Do something mm-hmm. else. Like why SpongeBob? Sure. I understand it has all it has these hallmarks and has these highlights. Krabby Patties, Krusty Krab, Neptune. But like, there's three different Neptunes now in SpongeBob canonically. There's the 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 the, the burger one where he cooks the burgers in the episode. Then we have the first movie one. Now we have this Joker, and it's like the, this. Do something else besides Neptune, you know? It's so weird. And the the, the weird thing about this film is it was going to be a completely different film. Um, mm. for Why a not while, just make a Camp was... Coral movie? There you go. I would have been completely fine with that. That's you what didn't I have to bring in this mess here. <laughs> yes, that's what I was thinking when they were doing the. Sorry, I interrupted your thing. Do you remember? Go no, ahead. no, no. That's fine. That's fine. No, 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 no. I I agree. They, I think that would have been much better uh, structurally as a film, but they decided to like introduce it like weirdly and already use tropes that we already have, like Atlantis. They already did Atlantis. They already said Gary, which I don't mind them doing again, but it's just like, just pick a lane, establish something. You want to make a Camp Coral? You want to make a movie to advertise Camp Coral? Then make a Camp Coral movie, you know? Yeah, did they? Oh man, did they show more of their origins in the Camp Coral, like at all? Do they go into episodes where it's just about Patrick and SpongeBob meeting? It's just about Sandy and SpongeBob meeting? No. So why not do the? Why not take those little chunks you did and put them in a whole movie, a Camp Coral movie? Like you said, an that origin was the best story bit of the film. Yeah, yeah, that was the best bit of the film. I would have loved that if they would have just like done that if they would have done that that would have been a lot better yeah because the camp coral scenes are just way too awkward it, like they feel just kind of shoehorned in there and yeah. if they would have just like focused on that 
this would have been a way better film. Yeah. 100%. Yep. I'm I'm with you on that 100%. Do you have any ideas since you're such a big SpongeBob fan? Have you ever had your own idea for a SpongeBob movie like if they said, "Hayden, we got uh we got the money. Here you go. Here, pitch us Here, your you idea." You make a film? Well, oh, man. yeah. Well, you're the idea man. What's the idea? What's the hook? What's the plot, you know, like and they said, "You you can get it. You got it. You can give us whatever you want and then we'll oh, make man. it." man. You know, you ever thought about I, it? If I could sit down, I probably could have maybe thought of something a little decent um but like you know you know you know i i feel like a lot of different elements could have been established inside of this film to make this film work so mm-hmm. if they're like all right here here's a film that we're working on right now help us make it help us make it a little better and right. i'm not saying do the first movie one for one right. because that's that it's already been done completely understandable but just focus on certain elements inside of this film to make it fleshed out or even the camp coral film itself um because yeah that that would have worked so much better or just do something original you know i i know a lot of people were playing with the idea of having a nickelodeon uh, based film of like spongebob and then he visits all the different multiverses of all the different, like Danny Phantom and all that. A lot right. of people were saying that that was going to be a film. And a lot of people were excited for that. I was too. Never ended up happening. Completely mm. fine. They made this instead. This right. film went through so many different iterations. First, yeah. it was going to be a Christmas film, which yeah. is completely fine. I like Christmas. Yeah, that would have um, been awesome. Yeah, I would have liked that. I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's do that. It was going to be called a Spon- SpongeBob, a wonderful, a wonderful sponge. Uh, didn't end up doing that. And then they did something with cats in space <laughs> and the real world. And I'm glad they didn't go down that route. I think that would have been way worse. Right. This film is a lot better than that one. It's just like, yeah, Gary is a cat world. already. He gives me out. Yeah. 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 But anyways, yeah. That's and now just... it's a, a snail shank sanctuary at the end of uh, a snail refuge. I thought that was cute. I was like, oh, everyone has a snail. Too, yeah. 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 That was there's cute. definitely some good elements in this film. I will admit. Um, but there's also a lot of bad, too. Yeah. Like I could have got on board with just let's just say it's a Gary m- movie uh a, a finding your friend movie like let's say let's see um i know gary doesn't talk but let's introduce like new characters that gary interacts with like he maybe he does get lost like he doesn't get stolen like he maybe spongebob accidentally leaves him at a theme park or something or he he gets you know like they just get lost or separated and then gary goes through an adventure to find spongebob and spongebob looks for him along the way and they have wacky adventures or whatever is there an episode like that already that think of? there is but what you're describing is a fantastic pitch i, I I'm, I'm just gonna say that right off the bat uh, almost like kind of like finding nemo where we're focusing yeah. on two different stories yes and then eventually they like kind of yes they together, meet together right? yes yes that, i i like that pitch a lot more actually and that i thought that was kind of what was pitch. gonna happen when the movie started i was like oh they're gonna have he's gonna try to search for gary and that's gonna be you know the whole adventure i thought that's what was going to happen but no no i think that's so. a fantastic pitch yeah i i in some form say get rid of a villain you know have the story just be about these two reconnecting you know mm-hmm. or getting lost reconnect somehow down the middle that's yeah. a way better like idea there doesn't need to be a antagonist in a sense the story itself of them getting divided is enough of an antagonist, you know? Right. You could throw Plankton in there doing something wacky, a scheme, uh, you know, he's like helping SpongeBob, but not really uh, something. Mm -hmm. There's something something you could do there, but sure. uh, But yeah. uh, um, And then also I think like there's no movies with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. I want to see them in a movie. Like what's a, I know they have a bunch of episodes in the show, but like, let's do something with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. I don't know what. I don't want to do like a Super Friends parody thing because they did that in the episode. But I want them they to be that. involved in some way in some kind of movie. Because they're be so, so funny. Good. They're just so great. They <laughs> love amazing. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. They're like oh, my favorite. Oh my God. They explore them a little more in the comics. Yeah. Freaking love it. It's so good. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Work off of that, right? They already they do That's time travel stuff. Cool 
already. Yeah. Maybe let's have a uh, old and young barnacle boy, old and young mermaid man kind of adventure where there's SpongeBob's and like they accidentally get swapped in time or something. I don't know. And then they, you know, we have the good mermaid man fighting and the young one, and then we have the old ones trying to fight. And I don't know. They, I don't know what they do, but I just want to see them in a movie. That would have been, would be cool. You are describing a, a fantastic pitch, my friend. Uh, yeah. I, I would invest in this film. Yes. I would invest in this. <laughs> That's what I am. I'm an idea man for now. Yeah. But Absolutely. I just, all I, all I know is things that I want to see. So that's just what I say. That's what I'd say. Mm-hmm. So I guess, um, I guess that's kind of wrapped it up. Do you want to rank, yeah. rank the movies? I think your ranking is going to sure. be the same as mine. Probably. It sounds like <laughs> I'm going to go one, two, three. Yeah. One, in two, that three. Order. Mine in two. that order. Yep. First movie, second movie, third movie. If I had to give them all like a number. Yes. Uh, 95 for the first movie. Right. 65 for the second movie, 35 <laughs> for the third movie. It's re- and it's weird right. because SpongeBob got better as it went along, but yeah, the third movie it was just trash. I don't understand. Yeah. It's so weird. I'm going to go with 90% on the first one. Mhm. No nostalgia, it still holds up. It's still the best mm-hmm. one. The wacky faces absolutely kill me. The slapstick is really good. The Patrick's butt cheeks is hilarious. Did you see my underwear? All the songs, the all of that stuff is really holds up and it's really great. And um, Mindy is just amazing. She's Princess Mindy. Like it's not Princess. She's wholesome. It's not Princess Buttercup or Princess Sunshine. Princess Mindy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's so yeah. funny. She's a funny name. And she's like adorkable. She's not like a cutesy, long flowing hair princess. She's like a little dorky glasses and i'm like that's a great yeah, cute character absolutely um, and then the second one i'm gonna go with like 50 percent. i don't like it as much as you do i think it's just too wild too and that's too completely fair. like none of it makes any sense at all like you could try to tell me that can you tell me like i challenge anyone to watch this movie um take a couple days off and then try to tell me exactly what happened in this movie. Like follow, <laughs> tell me the story of what happened. You really can't do it's it. True. There's like beat for no. beat. Like uh-uh. tell me exactly what happens in this movie. You can't do it. Like, I mean, someone out there definitely Hard. can do it, but like to get all these things that happen straight in your brain of the order they happen in is impossible to me. I watched this yesterday. I have no idea what happened. I'm glad that you remember more of it than I did because I had I had only a couple of things that I wanted to say. The Mad Max thing was was ridiculous, killing SpongeBob, mm-hmm. the dolphin time travel stuff, and that's all I remembered. And then of course the ending. To be honest, I fell asleep on the couch at the very end of the movie, <laughs> and I had I woke up and I had to rewind it <laughs> to watch to watch the ending. And that's not what you want to hear because it was during the the car chase and the you know the the. He has like a food mm-hmm. truck and it, he drives it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's when I fell asleep. So I woke up and Plankton was there when he had a tiny ass head and he had a huge Hulk body. And I was like, oh what the? God. I was like, what, what the is hell? happening? So what an that. awful time to go to sleep. I, like, to I have that. no idea what's happening. <laughs> yeah, but I was after work and, you know, I work four in the morning to two in the mm-hmm. afternoon. And so it yep. was like I, I was super worried. And I was laying on the couch and I, I just I just dozed off. So. But 50%, and then I think the last one, I think, would you say 35? I think so we can agree on one, I'll say 35 as well. Just because I'm glad I watched it, just for the fact that I'm caught up on my SpongeBob nostalgia, because yeah. I love SpongeBob. As a character, he's amazing, he's funny. I love the I love that he is this friendship um, beacon, you know, like, because that's a great mm-hmm. message. Like, you know, be nice to people. You have a new friend in me, and then he's like, who, where's my friend? And he's like, it's me, silly. I'm your friend. And it's like, oh, that's cute. You know, he's so awesome, man. he's kind of like he's like Naruto. He's like Luffy. He's like all my main anime protagonists. He's a yeah. friendship beacon. He's a good guy, except he just doesn't punch people very hard. So yeah. I'll agree with you there. Absolutely. So we agree on on that last one, at least as far as 35 mm-hmm. percent, just because the only reason because of that, because of SpongeBob as a character and those flashbacks from Camp Coral. I really, really, really love those a lot. Those are really cool. And I wish they would keep the little kid voices because I kind of thought that was adorable. But mm-hmm. they don't. And uh, maybe that's a mistake because I don't know. We 
we already lost Steven. I don't know how, how good of health Tom Kenny's in, but uh, we'll see, I guess. I don't know how long you can keep yeah. your voice doing this, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe he can do that till he's 80. I don't know. We'll see. But I thought they were really rebooting. I was like, oh, they're getting young act, young kid actors. They, they're going to they're going to carry this on for a while. But uh, mm-hmm. if, they're, if they're bringing in the and Plankton's voice actor's name is like Mr. In all the credits, Mr. It's, Lawrence. Yeah, Mr. Lawrence. And I'm like, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah. First, first name, Mr. Last name, Lawrence. Hmm. I don't know. But I thought that I was... think, yeah, he just prefers Mr. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Yeah, I've never like seen him. that. I've never seen that ever. But he's mm-hmm. Plankton's voice is amazing. But yep. all right, there's my rambling for that. Bart, I think you have anything else to say? Closing statements about SpongeBob my, in general? My closing thoughts are SpongeBob is just iconic, right? right? Yeah. Um, even with all these actors and voice actors disappearing he will never disappear um he's just that iconic and his cinema uh 50 50 <laughs> kind of you know yeah um and it's just it, it it fills me with so much joy even if the movie isn't always good i always just love sitting down and watching him mm-hmm. he's just he just tickles my nostalgic bone i love him so much half my room is spongebob but you know it's just mm-hmm. you can't go wrong with him you know you really can't. And no. um, and he will forever live on in memes, for sure. There's always Absolutely. a SpongeBob meme. Absolutely. Um, even though uh, forever, the, there will always be SpongeBob memes. Absolutely. I think until memes are not a thing anymore, but I don't know how long that will be. <laughs> until the, until the, the Karen wife computers take over, uh, we'll have SpongeBob memes. And wife computer for life <sighs> all right well hayden aka crispy boy i think that wraps it up for us on uh, the spongebob movies thank you for having me on man thank you so much yeah it was a long talk i'm so sorry for rambling for so long no i i but was it, having so much fun i don't know how long we've been on man. here but whatever <laughs> it's probably been an hour at least <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure oh, but man. but i had so much fun because i don't ever you know, outside of like my brother who I have like the we have the same childhood. I don't get to talk with people outside of him with about things that are very close to me from my childhood, you know. So absolutely. so to, yeah. to go down memory lane and to laugh and joke about some moments from SpongeBob, uh, it's always fun. And it's I could do it for how long ever I don't for I could do it for another hour. Right? Let me tell you that. <laughs> well, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me on. Yep. And y'all go, go subscribe to crispy boy on YouTube. Check out his videos. Check out the room tour video. Look at all the SpongeBob stuff he has. Cause it's amazing. Um, I don't know how he stores all this stuff, but he like, he's got a bigger room than I do for sure. Cause I got some it's junk. The and dimensional like, distortion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check out that video. Check out his review of the all-star Nickelodeon all-stars brawl. Cause that video is so funny. And it's a great, oh, it's a great in-depth analysis of the game. It's itself. Thank you so much. Oh my god. <laughs> now you're you're I just appreciate that. yeah. I I uh. So this is not just me. This is not just a collab. It's like this is like a uh, a fan club. I'm like I'm. A, you can consider me one of your fans. Oh my god! Thank you, man. Oh yeah, my, that's so flattering. Yep. So there you go, guys. Thank you for watching this, and we'll see you next time on uh, what I watched this week. Bye. <laughs>